A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to ward against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist on possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What should I do? For I do not have place to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build large ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who stored up treasures from themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are so used to, perhaps too much, for an important part of the homilies be exhortations to raise money. Raise money for the poor, for the support of the temple or, or the clergy, for social works or of all kinds. And then, an important part of these homilies is dedicated to something that is important, but secondary. Today Jesus speaks of solidarity, of charity, of helping those who have nothing. But he does it with the perspective that doesn't usually enter in our meditation. Before, they did, but since many years ago, no longer. Removing this perspective, an essential part of the gospel message is suppressed. I am referring to the perspective of eternal life. When the Lord says this parable, he explains that this rich man has a great harvest. In short, he is doing well in business, and that, as a calculating man, he is an intelligent man. That is why his business is going well. He is preparing for his future. Jesus is not criticizing him for that. What he is criticizing is what he is preparing his future. He is not thinking about heaven. That is what Jesus criticizes. Since he is not thinking about heaven, he is not thinking about other men either. If he were thinking about his neighbor, probably, even if he did not have it in mind, he will be thinking about heaven. But he is not thinking about eternal life, nor does he thinking about the judgment, nor about the people who are dying of hunger. If this man, rich, calculating, intelligent, sure, who has done well in business, but by luck or by his merit, in this man, will say, I'm going to read the test once again. He says, Then I will say to myself, So of mine, ye have goods stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink. Mary. If instead of saying this, he will have said, Rest, rest, with all that the word rest means, also eat and drink. One cannot be without eating and drinking, but he will add. And take into account those who have not the luck that you have, or the intelligence that you have. Take into account those who perhaps did not have the rich father like you. Take into account those who today are begging to eat. If he had thought about this, not that he was forced to say, I don't have to calculate my future or my children's. 
I don't have to for a C. I don't have to store the big warehouse. Today, we will say it is in checking account that, on the other hand, then comes a runaway inflation, and in no time it is vented. In short, he is not scolding him for being calculating, foresighted, intelligent. Jesus is telling him that he is not thinking about his neighbor. He is not thinking about other. Therefore, deep down, he is not thinking about himself. That is why he adds, fool. He says to this intelligent man, fool. Jesus calls him tonight. They are going to claim your soul. Whose will it be what you have prepared? Well, you might say my children's, but maybe for for some but maybe for something better for your children, that fortune that you give them, that they have not fought to earn it. It's like a poison, because you turn them or have already turned them into rich or capricious children who have everything, who don't know how hard it is to get it and who, for having everything, they destroy their lives with addictions from which there is no way to go get out. Let us think about eternal life. I think this is today's message. Let us think about eternal life. Let us think about God's love and the infinitive love, the divine mercy and undeserved love. Let us think about that. For love of God, out of gratitude to God, let us listen to His voice, which tell us, Whatever you have done to the least of my children, you have done it to me. Come, blessed of my Father. He says both things. Whatever you have done to the least of my children, I have been hungry, you have fed me. But He also adds, Come, blessed of my Father. Or, I have been hungry, and you have now fed me. Go away curse of my Father. Let us think about these two things. We can be blessed by the Father, or we can be cursed by the Father. If we are not capable of having sufficiently sensitive and human heart, generous to share with those who have nothing, let us at least think that there will be a judgment, that there will be eternal life. It is like the student he must study because he has to learn, because tomorrow he will need to that knowledge to, ki- to cure a sick person or to build a house, to lay out a road. If he is not capable of studying for love of science, let him study for fear of failure. The Lord tells us again and again, and we don't want to listen to him. There is eternal life. It is a hope. It is a joy. It is not a reason to fear. There is eternal life. Judgment exists, marked by the mercy of God. But judgment exists. What would, what would there here? Come, blessed of my Father, or go away, curse of my Father. They are Christ's words. The existence of eternal life is a reason to hope. But it is a call of attention from someone who loves us, to be told, come blessed, or to be told, you're full. Let us do things out of love and gratitude to God, who has given us everything, even the one who has achieved it through effort or brilliant intelligence. Let us do things out of love for a neighbor who needs us, and for God who is present in that neighbor and who will judge us. Amen.